Hey everybody and welcome back for part 11 of core fundamentals of web development. In this video we're going to learn some more about Flexbox so that we can get a responsive design for our application so that it looks good on all different kinds of devices. So let's go ahead and dive in. So first off, I, I, in most of these videos we've left you guys with a couple of links that you can look at. Um, one is going to be uh, CSS Tricks again, so we've seen this as a resource, awesome stuff. And the article is Don't Think About It, Flexbox Grids, and it's how to do a grid system. If you've heard of a grid system with something like Bootstrap, this is kind of the same idea. Basically it's this idea that you can have columns, and as you shrink down your screen size, things are going to adjust to fit accordingly. And let's take a look, so I've got uh, W3Schools here, and I'm going to expand my browser. And we're gonna switch up how we how we display this a little bit. So if I inspect this and I start moving, uh, moving and adjusting the width of this, these columns here, the column small four, column small four, column uh, small six, small three, small three, they're going to adjust as the screen changes size. So look, they should stay all three in a row for a while, and then at some point they're gonna shrink down and actually stack on top of each other. So this ability to adapt to the screen size using columns and kind of this grid system is a very common idea. Super, super powerful in Bootstrap, super, super common in how people think about and perform and execute responsive design. So that's what we want to take a look at. And basically what we want to do is we want to let there be links not stretching all the way across the screen. And if you've had your window open at full width, you've probably seen that these can get kind of, kind of wide and they look kind of goofy. We want these to basically have a max width and then sit X number of them on a line if they fit. So if, if these are 400 pixels wide, we can put as many as we want to across and then wrap them down to this next line. And then as the screen gets smaller and smaller, we want it to, to adapt accordingly. Let's look at our code. And I think we really, we're just gonna be taking a look at our, at our CSS. And we're gonna be working with a link list and our link item. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make our link list, and we need to go ahead and select it here. So our links list, and let's just make sure, I think we've already got that ID set up. Pretty sure, yeah, there we go, links list. And we want to come in and set it to display of flex. Now if you remember what happens when we do a display of flex, by default the flex direction is uh, horizontal, so it's going to have a flex direction of row, so these should start lining up here, all right, so you see them line up there, and they're kind of different widths. They take up just enough width that they need to to fit basically the title here and the, uh, the categories got, that we've got. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to do a flex wrap, which is going to wrap these and set it to wrap, and wrap these in case they don't fit all on one line. So as we shrink down, see, we should see it wrap once, wrap twice, and then we'll wrap again. And when we talk about responsive design, you'll hear a lot of people talk about mobile first. So the idea is that we want to make things look good on mobile and then scale it up as we adapt to different sizes instead of the other way around. So let's, uh, let's come back and shrink this. And so we'll be looking at something like this. And we want to tell basically at a smaller screen size, we want to have each of our links take up the entire width of what's available. So I'm gonna come into, not our HTML actually, but our dynamically generated HTML, and I'm gonna wrap each of these links inside of a div with a class of flex item or flex child, something like that. It's usually what people do to, uh, to represent an, a, a child of a flex container. Let's paste that in here, make that look a little better. All right, so if we, if we inspect these, we should have you know, the panel and then the flex item class wrapping it. So in each of these flex items, we'll have the panel inside of it. And we want to set basically the width of these to take up the entire um, available space. So we're going to come in to our flex item and we can set a flex basis to 100%. Now what this means is it's going to have by default, each item is going to take up 100% of the available space. So flex basis is gonna be what the goal is for each of these elements. So the goal is to have it take up, let's say, 100%, which is obviously gonna be the entire thing. Now, if you try to do, let's say, flex basis and you set it to a number of pixels, so 100 pixels, and there's not 100 pixels available, 
it'll start out at 100 and then it'll it'll adjust accordingly if you have to adjust. So if it just won't fit at what you want it to, it'll shrink down or it can kind of scale up. But flex basis is just what we want it to be ideally. So we save this and this will just put them all across. So they're taking up all the space. And this is gonna honestly look the same as what we had before where they're taking up all the space. And now we wanna come in and as the screen gets bigger, we wanna change the flex basis to be a different percentage. So let's say 33% or 50%. So we're gonna do what's called, uh, let's see here, where is my, uh, media queries. And media queries in CSS allow us to add certain styles depending on the width or height, or I guess width and height, of our um, of the page that we're working with. So what this media query does is it say it says apply these styles up until a width of 500 pixels. So everything 500 pixels and below apply these widths. Now what we want to do is we want to come in and we want to do kind of the opposite here, where we want to apply styles at a minimum width of 786 pixels and up. So we can do a at media only screen and min width. And this min width is gonna be 786 pixels. And then we can set our flex item to have a flex basis of 50%. So this is basically gonna put two of them on a line once we get to a certain width. So if we scale up, we should see, see these numbers here, 684. We're coming up on 786 now. And now we see we've got two elements per row and then those will just kind of get bigger as the space gets bigger. And then after, after we get bigger than that, we can actually do the same thing with a higher minimum width. So let's say a min width of 1280 and set this to 33. So this is gonna put three of them on a line. So we've got two on a line now, and then we'll come up a little bit more and somewhere in here. Now we've got three across. And then we'll just kind of leave three as the max. But this way it adapts, depending on the screen size that you're looking at. If we kept three across all the way down on these small phones on something like this, that would look terrible. But now we're able to spread them out on big screens and then shrink them down and stack them on top of each other for small screens. Now this is gonna be, this idea of responsive design and the grid system is gonna be a very common, uh, very common technique, a very common idea on how you do responsive design. So this is kind of a simple example, but it's gonna be something that applies in a lot of the stuff that you'll see in the future. So one additional thing that we can do, we can update our navigation bar. If we look at our navigation bar and shrink this down a whole, whole lot, they're gonna kind of overlap there and kind of look a little bit ugly. We can make that look a little bit better by doing some more responsive, uh, by doing some more media queries with our nav bar. So let's come in to our nav bar section, wherever that is. Nav bar, nav bar, nav bar, there we go. And let's do a media query. So media only screen and, and I'm gonna set the max width to 786. So this is gonna be the opposite of what we just did. This is going to apply these styles to everything 786 and below. And I wanna set the nav height. So we'll select our nav, we'll set the height to be 100 pixels. And then our nav container, nav container. Now we're gonna change two different things here. We're gonna change flex direction to column. So this is gonna stack them on top of each other. So let's just see what that looks like. So notice these are stacked on top of each other. All right, and then we come out and they adapt a little bit. And then we want to say justify content center. Now if you remember justify content, justifies the content, but on the main axis. And now that we're doing flex direction of column, the main axis is vertical or a column or um, top to bottom. So justifying content on this main axis now will center them vertically. So let's come in and now we should see these are centered. They look pretty good. That's actually just what we want. We just wanted to change just a little bit to show a little bit of um, responsive design to accommodate for smaller screens to make sure things still look good on different screen sizes and different uh, different devices. So that's gonna do it for this video. We're really getting close. We've just got a few more videos to get through. We're gonna add some transitions and some animations and then we'll wrap up and talk about what we did. Uh, but until then, I will see you guys in the next video. I hope you guys are excited and enjoying it along the way.